Well, welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And in doing so, we need to talk about God and how he thinks, how he acts, and why he does things the way he does them. And we've been talking about that in his plan for redemption. All right. In the last session, then, we talked about Jesus uh, literally come into the form, of, uh, into this world, literally in the form of a human being, literally in every respect, and had to grow physically and develop spiritually, just like you and I do. And we found out that his, the secret was <laughs> meditating on the word of the Lord day and night, the very same thing that you and I are taught to do in Joshua 1 8. And we saw, saw in Psalms 119 where Jesus said, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it day and night. Psalms 119. And I believe that was in verse 97 where we started there. And I suppose I better make that clear before I go any further here and get you going in the wrong direction. Psalms 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. All right, now, he came in this form of, into this world in the form literally as a human being in every respect. And so then we come into this area now where Jesus then was, we find, was subject to temptations, the same temptations, lustful desires of the flesh, just like you and I are. And we, first of all, let's pick it up in James chapter 1. He had to grow spiritually just like you and I and develop spiritually. In James chapter 1, verse 2, My brother encountered all joy when you fall into various temptations, tests, or trials. This is how it's literally in the Greek. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or perseverance or endurance. But let patience or perseverance or endurance have its perfect work that you may be complete that you be, be made perfect or mature and complete, lacking nothing. All right. So he was, as we're going to see now, he was subject to those temptations as well. But let me first of all read verse, verse 12 of James chapter 1, starting with verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures for temptation, for when he has been approved, he'll receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire is conceived, he gives birth to sin, and sin is full going brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Well, thank God Jesus didn't yield to any of the temptations, <laughs> so he didn't get into trouble. But he never yielded to any of the temptations. So, let us go and, and, and back up here to Matthew chapter 4. And here we go, and here comes Matthew chapter 4. And we'll pick it up here in verse 1. When Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. So now, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted by the devil. Not just these three temptations that we see listed here in a moment. Now, when the tempter came, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said, If you're the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, you shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to them, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, All these things I will give you if you'll fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to them, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall Worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. And so we can see that in every temptation, Jesus was able to refer to the scriptures. And, 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 that's, and that was that what brought him the victory. So I see here it's important that you and I uh, get a handle on the scriptures. So that when the temptations come, we can... We can quote the scriptures, and, and the devil has to flee. He can't stand against the word. Your opinion, or what you think, is not going to cause the devil to flee from you. It's only the written word of God. 
which Jesus demonstrated so clearly here. Now, also, we've said before, the devil cannot create anything. Angels can't create anything. He's a fallen angel. But he can, the devil can only pervert or twist the scriptures. And so we see an example of that in the second temptation when he said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. See, now the devil's coming back with scriptures, see? He shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bury up lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to them, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So Jesus came right back with the scripture. Satan had taken his scripture out of context. He perverted it. And Jesus set the record straight. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So it's important that we are familiar with the word for sure. And that's why we need to make sure that we're part of a good church where the word is being taught because we're not to forsake the assemblings of one another. And it's when we can get together and learn the word, study the word, and, 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 and talk to each other about the word that it becomes a revelation then in our own hearts as we meditate on it day and night. All right, now, we also notice in these three temptations that Satan cannot, Satan now has been cast down on the earth at this point. Um, no, he's not been cast down yet, I'm sorry. That doesn't happen until he's uh, resurrected and ascends into heaven and then there's the war that breaks out in heaven. That's later when Satan, the accuser of the brother, is cast down on the earth. But right now, of course, he, can, he, he cannot literally touch God or the throne. He, you know, he is, he is death, he is sin, he can't enter the most holy place. However, as a man, God is now open to be attacked by Satan as any other man in the world. In other words, Satan cannot touch God personally. I mean, it's impossible for him to get close to God. Nobody's seen, been, seen the face of God. He can't do that. But what Satan can do, he can touch God's creation. And that is mankind. And so now Jesus has taken on the form of a man, literally in every respect. And so as a man now... God is now open to be attacked by Satan as any other man in this world. Did you get that? God took on the form of a man. And now that he's taken on the form of a man, Satan can attack God with temptations and every other thing. He can attack God as a man. God took on the form of a man. Now God can be confronted by Satan, tempted by Satan at all points, even as we are, because God is come into this world as a man. Isn't that phenomenal when you think about that? Now, God is open to be attacked by Satan. And God wouldn't have had to do that. <laughs> you know, he had it made in heaven. Why did he think, why, what, 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 why did God want to take on the form of a man? To redeem mankind that rebelled against them. God's got it made. He's living in heaven and he's always lived, he's always existed. He doesn't need man. And why would God take a chance to be tempted by the devil as a man? Because if Jesus would have yielded to any of these temptations, that would be like God yielding to a temptation and God would cease to be God. There would be no more heaven. Everything would fall apart. But God was willing to take that chance just to redeem Mankind And see, God had to exercise his faith as a man, as a human being. And Jesus meditated the word of the Lord day and night. And so God had to take a chance that he, as a man, would stay in faith, stay with the word, not yield to any temptations of the devil, in order to redeem mankind. And God did just that. Whew, that is something else. Well, there's even more than that. We're going to see here in the next session that Jesus is tempted even on the eve of, uh, of his crucifixion. And that was really a close call. But at any rate, we'll have to cut it short right here because we don't have time to develop the whole thing and uh, in the 30 seconds. So meanwhile... Be blessed in everything that you set your hands to, in Jesus' name, and we'll see you in the next session. Amen.